Greetings and welcome to a new video about analog electronics. We continue with the multiple op-amp circuits. This will be our second example and we will see here also two op-amps and another situation where we have one DC voltage source. Of course we will work out everything in this calculation step by step and also verify these in SPICE simulations. So let's look at our example. We have this circuit again with two op-amps, op-amp 1 and op-amp 2. We have one DC voltage source, Vs, of 2 volts. We have several resistors, R1, R2, R3 and R4, also the load. All of them are given. And we have also a feedback resistor here, which is not given, and we need to determine that in the questions. So let's look at the questions. Determine the voltage gain, Vl over Vs, which is this load voltage divided by the source voltage as a function of the resistor RF. So we need to have a formula which has this RF. And we also need to calculate the RF if that load voltage is minus 9 volts when you have Vs of 2 volts. That is the condition for question B. We consider everything ideal, so the op-amps are ideal and we can assume that for our calculations. And since this VL is here at this node with respect to ground, the current will be flowing from this node to ground, so from top to bottom, in this configuration of the plus and the minus sign as shown here. So let's look at the solutions. Before we move on, we always want to know what the initial condition of this circuit is. We have negative feedback, and if you have negative feedback, the op-amp nodes are exactly at the same potential, so the V1 plus and the V1 minus will be then exactly equal to each other. Why do we have negative feedback? Now for op-amp 1, you see here this node output will go in the inverting input, which says it is a negative feedback. If it was going in the positive input, it was then not a negative feedback, but positive feedback. So we cannot then use or say or assume that then V1 plus is equal to V1 minus. Now we can say that. Since this is zero, it is also zero, and this can be then considered as a virtual ground. If I look and then say V1 plus is equal to V1 minus. Now, if I also look at op-amp 1, the same thing, these two nodes voltages are equal to each other. If we have negative feedback, yes, we have it, because at the output node, we see a direct connection to the inverting input, so we have negative feedback. These two nodes are exactly equal to each other. So we can say V2 plus is equal to V2 minus. What you also see in addition is that there is another feedback mechanism going from this node all the way to the inverting input of the first op-amp. So there's another feedback, and you see in this circuit actually two feedbacks, so we have multiple feedback configuration. Now, ideal op-amp uh, means that you have an, one of the characteristics of an ideal op-amp is you have input impedance, which is infinite. So we can consider the, the nodes between these two nodes are open. Same for the op-amp two. So it means infinite input impedance, and that's a very handy characteristic. That means the current entering in the op-amps are zero. So I1 plus and I1, I1 minus and I1 plus are zero. This is a very important uh, specification we will use later. And so same for the second op-amp, I2 plus and I2 minus. So this is also zero. So these are really important to consider before you work out the detailed analysis later. Now, first question, the voltage gain, VL over Vs, that is the load voltage over the source voltage as a function of the RF. So let's see, before I move on, I will designate some points here, point A at this node, point B at this node, and point C at that node. I also designate, before I move on, the current direction, so the plus and the minus sign for the R1, going from left to right, similar for R2, going from left to right, and also for RF, IF, which is also going from the left to right. This is just my choice. You can also have another choice. It doesn't matter. It will just come up to the same answer and same conclusion. I will now use Kirchhoff's current law at node A, so KCL for short. That is also the reason for developing or denoting these nodes. I know then the following. These current I1 will then split in IF, I2, and I1 plus. But I know I1 plus is zero because we said that since the input impedance of an ideal op amp is infinite. So input impedance of the ideal op amp is infinite, so we can consider this an open circuit, so this will be gone, and that means I1 will split in I2 and IF. 
that's perfect. So that's exactly the reason why these two conditions are really important. Now we can say using Ohm's law that V1 over R1 is I1. So that's actually shown here. V2 over R2 for I2 and Vf over Rf. So this is just the voltage for R1 R, and this is the voltage for R2. This is the voltage for Vrf. Now we can now express these in the given values and also the note voltages we have this designated. So we can say Vs minus Va. This is the voltage drop here. Va minus Vb. That is the voltage drop here. And Va minus Vl. That is the voltage drop here. So we can then designate, write down V1, V2 and Vf in terms of the node voltages we have designated and also the output and the input voltage nodes we have here given. Now we also have the R1, R2 and Rf. Now we can substitute the values for R and also the Va. That is zero because this was zero for the first op-amp that goes directly physically actually going to zero since V1 plus is zero V1 minus is also zero due to negative feedback and V1 minus is exactly VA connected. So we can say VA is zero, VA is zero, VA also here zero and the rest is just a variable we need to use. And again, I don't use VS of two volts here because I want to have an expression. So it will be a ratio. 100 for R1, that is what we can substitute. And also for R2, we can do 900 and we have this expression. Now we need to simplify this expression. So we need to get rid of these fractions. What we can do, left hand side and right hand side multiply by 900. This will be 9 times Vs. This will be just minus Vb. And this will be minus 900 Vl over Rf. Still something we need to do because there is another fraction. Again, a similar form. We can multiply the left and the right hand side by rf then we have this expression we see 9 times rf vs is equal to minus rf vb minus 900 vl and this is a nice expression we can use and let's call this equation number one it is not the final form because there is something we need to substitute here and change why i need an expression for vl over vs that means I only want these two variables. If I look at my expression in equation number one, I see VL, I also VS, and also the RF, that is also the function as a function of RF, as also the numbers, but I also see VB, which is not what I wanted. So I need to replace that, and write it down in terms of VL or VS, depending on what is possible. So the next step I want to make is, let's come closer to the VL and then use this voltage divider rule between node B and node C. I can do that. So you can also use these nodes to develop an equation. So we can say this node VB will apply a voltage, will be then across the R3 and R4. But since this branch is has no current, so I2 plus is zero, since the input impedance of the op-amp is zero, we can sort of see this part of the circuit as a standalone circuit, which has no connection to the op-amp two as a current flow. So we can say Vc, this node voltage, will be then R4 divided by R3 plus R4 times Vb. That's the voltage divider rule. But we know Vc is directly Vl. Why? This node is Vl, connected directly, that goes directly to the minus, the inverting input of the op-amp 1. Due to negative feedback is V2 minus, this node is equal to V2 plus, but that is also Vc. So Vc is... VL and this is actually a buffer function. So this is a buffer circuit for op amp 2 and by the way this is the inverting amplifier circuit. So we see template circuits also here. So VC is VL. Now collecting these two we get this expression. We can say VL is equal to R4 over R3 plus R4 times VB. Now we see something interesting. VB now can be rewritten or expressed in terms of the VL. That's exactly what we wanted actually in the equation number one. And then we can have an expression which will help us to directly write down the VL over VS. So let's now uh, continue with this analysis. So we can say let's do left hand side and right hand side by R3 plus R4. So we multiply the left and the right hand side by this uh, expression. So we get this. I can still divide by R4 and have this expression. So I only have an expression for Vb in terms of the resistors R4, R3 and R4. Now we can now substitute the values. Let's then substitute the values for R4, R3. You have this and this will be then simplified 5 over 3 times Vl is equal to Vb. 
Now that is now the expression two, and that will be then used to simplify this such that we get the ratio for the voltage gain. So let's bring these two equations together. You see the equation number one we already had, and this is the second equation we just determined using the voltage divided rule between node B and C. If I now substitute the equation number two in one, I have this expression. You see, only VL, only VS, and also the function of RF which we wanted. So also some numbers, coefficient, that's fine. So no VA, no VB, or no VC, or any other unknowns we don't want in our expression. Now we need to massage this and have a ratio of VL over VS. That is the next step. First, get rid of this fraction. So multiply the left and right side by three. So you will get this. 27 RF VS is equal to minus RF VL minus 2700 VL. Let's collect the terms for VL. You can see minus VL can be taken out and then make a parenthesis as shown here. And also the left hand side stays as, as, the same, as, as shown here. Now we can have a ratio which is then quite easily done by doing VL over VS. And you can see by cross multiplication you can check that this expression for the gain G is correct because VL times the 5RF plus 2700 is this. And this minus sign is actually flipped here. That will be then 27RF times Vs, that's shown here. And that's also the answer for question A. But let's look a little bit more carefully uh, to this expression. What's happening if I now make RF exactly zero? If I make this exactly zero, mathematically speaking, it means zero over zero plus 2700 will be exactly zero. Looking at the circuit, I make actually a short here because when this is zero, that will be a short. So you actually short out completely this part of the circuit. You measure for this VL, this complete wire going to the virtual ground, which is then zero. So you measure zero volts. It doesn't matter what kind of voltage you put in, you always measure zero volts because the gain voltage to the gain is zero. If I make the resistor infinite so that is the other extreme make it open actually so disconnect this what you have is not following now by limit uh, condition you can say minus 27 rf will be then a very large number and five times rf is also a very large number let's say you take one giga ohms for the rf will be five giga ohms five giga ohms plus 2700 is still very close to five giga ohms so this 2700 is not really interesting anymore and then you have minus two 27 RF over 5 RF approximately. So you approach actually this expression. And that will be give you minus 27 over 5 will be exactly minus 5.4. So the gain is maximum in absolute sense 5.4 and, and then the inversion, inversion part it will be then minus 5.4. So this is what you get if you open this. So you actually change your circuit. So these are now the two conditions, extreme conditions. Let's now calculate uh, for question B what the RF must be in order to have VL of minus nine volts when the VS is two. Now for that, I need to use the gain formula. That means minus nine over two will be then minus 4.5. So this will be then minus 4.5, left side, the left side of this equation. The right side of this equation is shown here. That's already determined. And if I now collect these and say minus 4.5 will be then this expression, and I can now solve this for RF. Now you can then do minus 27 RF over minus 4.5. That will be exactly six times RF is equal to five times RF plus 2700. That is the expression from going here to here. What you see is RF down, one RF is 2700 ohms because I have six RF here, five times RF here. If I now subtract five RF from here, to the right hand side, I also do that from left hand side, I get exactly one RF will be in 2,700 ohms or 2.7 kilo ohms. This is the answer for question B. Now let's collect the answers for A and B. Let's also look at the simulation result. This is the simulation result. We have, uh, I have drawing in this uh, SPI simulator. You can see the minus nine volts as the solution for this SPI simulation, exactly as, as we have determined. You see also the VS, the R1, R2, R3, R4, and also the lower uh, uh, resistor. And also here the RF of 2.7 kilo ohms. So this will produce the result here. 
If I go to another analysis, exact same circ, but then more information given in this table, you can see also the VL here at the last entry as nine, minus nine volts. You also see the VS here as two volts. What you also see is the voltage drop across RF going from node one to VL node that's shown here in yellow and also red. That is plus nine because it measures from this node to that node. Now, if I measure from this node to that node, which is ground, I measure minus nine. So going from right to left for this component, I measure plus nine. But if I go from, uh, I mean, from left to right, you plus uh, nine. But if you go to from right to left, you measure minus nine. That proves this node is zero. So that is another uh, way to check that. So our calculations are all correct and verified by our simulations. Now we can go in more detail and produce this nice plot, which you see is the exact same circuit again. Now our F will be swept. So it will be changing from zero all the way to some large value, 20 kilo ohms. And the X value, X axis, the horizontal axis, the feedback resistor or F, and the vertical axis will be then load voltage. You can see it starts at zero. That is also what we have expected. We said if this is feedback resistor is zero, the load voltage will be zero. This is again, by the way, for two volts. Going up, up in the feedback resistor, you see it will drop negatively for the load voltage. And for nine, for uh, 2.7 kilo ohms, you see it is minus nine volts as calculated. And if I increase this further, so RF going to all the way to 6.75 kilo ohms, it doesn't really decrease that much, it goes to minus 10. If I increase it even further to all the way to 20 kilo ohms, it goes to minus 10.5 one six volts approximately but we know it must be has a gain of this one as in the rf going to infinite was minus 27 over 5 which was then minus 5.4 if i have two volts here as the input it will be then two volts times the gain so minus 5.4 will be then minus 10.8 volts at the output that's what we will see if I make this resistor for the RF even larger. So let's say 100 kilo ohms, 1 mega ohm, etc. We will see that shortly in the simulator when we dive now to the simulator. So let's now jump to the SPI simulator and also see more details there. So we are here in the simulator. You can see the VS again, our 2D, 2 volt uh, DC input voltage, R1, R2, R3, and R4. And this is the load of 50 ohms. So we measure here the voltage. Two op amps, both of them are ideal. This is in the buffer, and this is the non this is in the inverting or uh, in, inverting amplifier configuration. This is the RF we have calculated was 2.7 kilo ohms. If I now do analysis, DC analysis, and then calculate no voltages, I see exactly minus nine for the specific two volts. If I do table of results, let's let me also do that. You can see some values here, a lot of information actually. So if I click on some component here, you can see it will be highlighted for that specific component will be then minus nine and also the associated current. So you can also do that for here, for here, and also for here. So you can get more information if required. I also want to show you something else. This is already proved that this is correct, but what happens if I now change this RF? Let me make this zero because it was one of the extremes we have discussed. This will be a short actually in practical. So going to DC analysis, so you see zero, so that means two volts will produce zero. It doesn't matter what kind of voltage this is, this will always be zero because the gain is zero. If I make this, for example, very large, let's make this 100 uh, T, that means tera ohms, so very, very large, almost open actually. If I now do the analysis, DC analysis going again, you see minus 10.8 volts. Why? Because this was, uh, this complete thing has a gain of minus 5.4, and I have an input of two, 2 times minus 5.4 will produce minus 10.8 volts. So this is again the proof that this is correct. So let's go back and this is now our 2.7 kilo ohms and will produce the minus 9 volts. All right guys, this is for this example uh, about the multiple op-amp circuit. If you have any questions, comments about this, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another interesting video.